You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to build your very own EMP generator. Okay, so some quick disclaimers before we get started. Devices that generate electromagnetic pulses such as these may not be technically legal to use in your area. I'm not sure where you are, so be sure you know the laws and to know what you're doing. Also, never use this on anyone else's devices or to cause destruction because most definitely that is illegal. So with that all in mind, let's go ahead and learn how to build this. If you've been subscribed for a couple of months or you just saw the video, then you know that in a previous video we made this a $5 pocket taser. Now since the video, as you can see, I made a few adjustments, namely this momentary switch is a much smaller one. And second, instead of two wires coming out of the top, I just cut off these two ends of these roofing nails to use as the two terminals on the top. And so when connecting up a 9 volt battery, we can go ahead and click this and generate quite a powerful arc of electricity. So in this video, we're going to be using that high voltage pulse coming out of this $5 pocket taser in order to generate an EMP. In the How to Transmit Energy Wirelessly video, we learned that a magnetic field induces a current inside of electrical wire, and that a current of electrons through wires induces a magnetic field. So with an EMP, if we can give a wire a lot of current at once, it'll build a stronger magnetic field for a fraction of a second. And if we take that wire and turn it into a coil such as this, the magnetic field is multiplied that much more. So by using this, we can make a strong burst magnetic field that will then induce a current inside of other electrical devices, thus frying them. Now to produce an EMP, you'll normally see a circuit like this. You'll have two points for high voltage going into it. And then from there, normally it goes across. There's normally a spark gap around here. Over here, you'll normally have a capacitor. And over here is going to be your coil. And how this works is that when the high voltage goes across, it'll charge up this capacitor. And when the capacitor is fully charged up, it'll shoot all the current from the capacitor down through here and jump across that spark gap, successfully discharging the capacitor. From this, it'll send a huge spike in current across that coil, thus making a momentary magnetic field that grows and then collapses in on itself really fast. And so, as you can see from the schematic that I was referring to just a moment ago, here we have a spark gap, and over here we have the capacitor. And I actually have a couple more capacitors back here, just to give it a little more of a high voltage buffer point. If you want to learn how to make these capacitors, we made that in the last video. A link for how to build these high voltage capacitors, this high voltage power supply, and the pocket taser will be down below in the description. When I flip this on, watch the multimeter and see what happens. As you can see for that brief moment, it shut off the multimeter and the multimeter restarted. Since these capacitors are charged up, you're going to want to make sure you have something safe to discharge it. If I were to leave it on for longer than just that brief second, it would probably destroy this multimeter. Since I don't want it broken, I'm not going to test that, but just know that that probably is what will happen. Okay, so now instead of that big high voltage power supply, I've connected it up to my small pocket taser. Let's go ahead and flip it on using the same spark gap as before and see what happens with the multimeter. As you can see, the EMP is working well. Okay, so now I'm going to be taking all of these things and putting them onto this board with the coil up here to make sort of like an EMP stick. I'm still going to use our homemade capacitors because that's something that all of you can do. However, if you've salvaged or just have ceramic disc capacitors such as these rated for high voltage so that it would take up less space than these big capacitors here. I'm going to be using this thing I had lying around for the spark gap. I'm not really sure what it is, but it should work fine. Now one end of the coil needs to be attached to this other end of the spark gap. The other end of the spark gap needs to be attached to one end of your capacitor bank. And the other end of your capacitor bank needs to be attached over here to the other end of your coil. Now when we attach alligator clips to either end of the spark gap here, and if we attach them onto the pocket taser, when we click it we should see voltage jump across this spark gap here. And just as before, this is generating an EMP through this coil. Now I could attach these capacitors on the underside of this board, and it would be a functioning EMP stick. And whenever I bring this coil near to, it'll send an electromagnetic pulse through it, thus damaging the object. I would do this, however I have a better idea for a less powerful EMP, but more of a stealth pocket EMP to go along with the pocket taser theme. So I wound some enameled copper wire around this PVC tube here in order to give me a hollow enclosure along with the coil needed. My plan is going to be to take those high voltage ceramic capacitors I have and stuff them inside of here till I get the high enough voltage rating with the amount of capacitance I want and then use the two nails up here for the spark gap. And when it's done, you should just be able to connect one wire from the capacitor to one end of this and then the coil to the other end and then slide this on top and then you have yourself a pocket EMP attachment for your pocket taser. Now I'm going to simply stuff these capacitors inside the hollow shaft here 
and then I have this wire coming out that I'll put down on the other side to attach the nails or the spark gap. Once you have those wires connected on up, you can take this plastic cover and slip it on over, and then you have yourself your very own pocket EMP. Now remember guys, this will mess up electronic devices, so don't use it around anything you care about too much, and especially don't use it around equipment that's not yours. The nice part about this though is that from the EMP, if you want to turn it back into your pocket taser, you just slide it on off, and make sure the wires come off with the nails. I had it loosely wound just barely, so that's why it came off so easily. And your pocket taser will be back to good as new. Okay, so final notes on this configuration. After some testing, I determined this is still a suitable way to generate an EMP, that is the cylindrical coil here. However, it's much more weak. I would show you guys with this multimeter here, however, I believe I have fried it. How I fried it was with this, and I left this EMP constant next to it for about 10 seconds, and it fried out the multimeter. However, I would say that this coil design is weaker than this coil design. I just think the pocket EMP attachment is a pretty cool accessory for the pocket tape. With that said, I only have one layer of wire going down this. You could probably make this coil better by putting multiple layers on top of it. So now you know how to build your very own EMP generator. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to get our weekly videos such as this one in your subscription news feed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Be safe, and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to build your very own capacitor.